What happens when substances dissolve? In this video, we'll consider solids dissolving in water. When something dissolves in water, it goes from the solid state, where the molecules or ions are held in a regular lattice, to the aqueous state, where the molecules or ions are dispersed through the water. Let's look at examples of a covalent molecular substance, iodine, and an ionic substance, sodium chloride, dissolving in water. First, let's consider them as solids. At the lab level, as you'd see them in the lab, iodine crystals are shiny and grey, almost but not quite metallic in appearance. Sodium chloride crystals are colourless, transparent in fact, but when you have a lot of small crystals together, they scatter light and so they appear white. If we now zoom down to the molecular or ionic level, a crystal of solid iodine is made of individual iodine molecules, that's diatomic I2 molecules, that's these ones here, arranged regularly in a lattice and held together by weak attractions between the molecules. Iodine is a covalent molecular substance, so within each molecule the two iodine atoms are held together by a covalent bond. Sodium chloride, an ionic compound, is composed of alternating sodium ions and chloride ions in a lattice. The sodium ions are positive, they're the cations, and the chloride ions are negative, they're the anions, and these oppositely charged ions attract each other. And this means the lattice is strongly held together by ionic bonds between those alternating positive and negative ions. Okay, now let's dissolve them in water. At the lab level, when iodine dissolves in water, it produces a red-brown solution, which used to be used to disinfect cuts or grazes and things like that, also for purifying water. Sodium chloride dissolved in water makes a colourless solution. At the molecular ionic level again, when a molecular compound like iodine dissolves in water, the individual molecules separate from each other and spread out through the water. Notice that I'm not showing the individual water molecules here, we're just assuming that they're there. Now, this is really important. The covalent bonds within each molecule don't break when they dissolve. Each I2 molecule remains unchanged. Rather, it's the weak attractions which held the molecules together in a crystal that break and allow the molecules to move freely about. At a symbolic level, we could represent this process using an equation like this, where the subscripts here indicate the change in state from solid to aqueous. Notice that the formula of the substance doesn't change. It's still I2. All that has changed is essentially the surroundings of each molecule. Now, just to remind you of some terminology, here in this situation, the iodine is the solute, that's the solid being dissolved. The water is the solvent, that's the liquid into which the solute dissolves. And the combination of those two is called the solution. That's the mixture of the solute and the solvent. The more iodine is dissolved in a certain volume of water, the higher the concentration of the iodine solution will be. Okay, now let's look at the sodium chloride dissolving on a molecular ionic level. When this crystal dissolves, the ionic bonds that hold the ions in the lattice break and the individual ions are able to move freely through the water. As with the iodine, we can represent this on a symbolic level using an ordinary chemical equation, like this. However, in this case, the formula NaCl no longer accurately represents the physical form of the aqueous compound, since it implies that the sodium ions and the chloride ions are still bonded together. Instead, we can see that when they're in the water, when they're dissolved in the water, the ions are now separate from each other. So instead, we can rewrite the equation, and on the right-hand side, we're going to write the ions separately to show how they really physically are. This is what's called an ionic equation. It's a chemical equation that shows aqueous ions as separate from each other to represent their actual physical state more accurately. Now, why should ionic compounds dissolve into separate ions, but molecular compounds remain as molecules? Well, to understand this, we need to talk about intermolecular forces, and that will come in another video. So hold that thought, and we'll dive into that later.